do a video on this topic. We've done countless fact videos, countless history videos, yet it's taken us so long to get to today's topic. Dinosaurs. I fully intend on doing a, a history video breaking down the different uh, dinosaur periods uh, in a chronological order, but this evening simply what we're going to do is sit and whisper one hour of dinosaur facts. So, if you could leave a like on this video, that would be lovely right off the bat. But apart from that, let's get into the facts. Dinosaurs lived during the Mesozoic Era. The Mesozoic Era roughly ran from 245 to 66 million years ago generally divided into three periods, the Triassic, the Jurassic, and the Cretaceous periods. Dinosaurs first evolved during the Triassic period, increased in number and variety in the Triassic period, in the Jurassic period, sorry, and evolved even further during the Cretaceous period, and then, well, pretty much just died off, really. Dinosaurs evolved from reptiles the size of house cats from around 244 to 242 million years ago. Small yet agile reptiles known as dinosauromorphs rapidly increased and spread across the world. While they were far too small to come even close to the top of the food chain, they were speedy enough to escape predators for long enough to evolve into dinosaurs. Dinosaurs are still alive and with us today. Don't go running and screaming for help, though, unless you happen to be deathly afraid of chickens. In fact, all birds are descendants of dinosaurs, even the humble hummingbird. All the non-avian dinosaurs went extinct, but the avian dinosaurs evolved over the millennia into birds. Pterodactyls, along with all other winged dinosaur-like reptiles, belong not to the dinosaur family, but are classified as pterosaurs. While pterosaurs are indeed related to dinosaurs, the connection is quite distant, splitting off from the archosaurs. Next fact. Dinosaurs are split into two main categories. To put it simply, either a dinosaur is a saurischian sor sor or they're an ornithischian struggle. Funnily enough, the lizard-hipped dinosaurs are more commonly related to modern-day birds, while the bird-hipped dinosaurs all went extinct. The first dinosaur was named before we even knew dinosaurs existed. In 1815, William Buckland, a geology professor from Oxford University, came across the skeleton of an animal unlike any previously recorded. Deciding that it was some long extinct form of reptile, he named it Megalosaurus, which is the Greek for Great Lizard. Dinosaurs were only classified in 1842. Just seven years after Buckland discovered the Megalosaurus, a geologist and his wife came upon a new iguana-like skeleton in Sussex, England, which they named Iguanodon. More fossils started turning up, so Sir Richard Owen, who later founded London's Natural History Museum, classified the fossils as belonging to the Dinosauria family, which is Greek for terrible lizards. Dinosaurs weren't named as such because they inspired terror. When Sir Richard Owen came up with the name for dinosaurs, he meant the word terrible in a different sense. He, de 
described them as being fearfully great, as in far larger in size than any previously known reptiles. Maybe if the first fossil we came across were that of a T-Rex, he would have meant it more of a literal sense. When the Iguanodon was first reconstructed, its thumb was placed on top of its nose. It wasn't until 40 years later in 1878, when more Iguanodon skeletons were unearthed, that we realised the long spiky thumb was not like a rhino's horn, but an odd thumb-like digit. To this day, paleontologists still haven't come up with a good reason why Iguanodons develop such long spiky thumbs, although it may have been for self-defence. Next fact. Dinosaurs lived on all of Earth's continents. When dinosaurs first came onto the scene in the Triassic period, some 230 million years ago, the Earth's continents were clustered together into one giant supercontinent called Pangaea. Over the following 165 million years that dinosaurs roamed the Earth, Pangaea slowly drifted apart, separating many dinosaur species from each other. The largest dinosaurs were the Titanosaurs. The Titanosaurs were a subspecies of sauropods, herbivorous four-legged leviathans with long necks and small heads. They stomped around quite late in the dinosaur age, from about 145 to 66 million years ago. It's quite debatable which of them is the largest due to poor preserved fossils, but the Argentinosaurus is the best bet, measuring in at 99 to 110 tons. <laughs> the smallest sauropod was only slightly heavier than a bull. The Europasaurus, Euro, no, the Europasaurus, put an extra S in there. The Europasaurus was a pretty remarkable sauropod. It appeared like one in all respects, but never grew to anything like the monumental sizes of its cousins. While its 19 feet 8 inch length is still quite long, it's nothing like its football pitch sized relatives. Gallimimuses had beaks instead of teeth. The odd looking theropod once roamed around during the late Cretaceous period in what is now Mongolia. Although its name translates to chicken mimic, it actually more closely resembled a giant ostrich with arms. Most of the world's dinosaur fossils are found in three places. The high altitude badlands of China, Argentina and North America hold some of the largest amounts of fossils, or at least easily accessible ones anyway. The reality is that much of the world is covered in fossils, but they're easily unearthed in desert-like environments due to the lack of vegetation. Some pterosaurs were covered in fur. Covered in fur. Most fossilised dinosaur bones aren't actually bones anymore. The fossilization process most commonly happens when something gets trapped between layers of sediment or sand and remains there for millions of years. These remains then get surrounded by a layer of water, which replaces the original organic material with various minerals, creating a rock-like copy. Most dinosaurs weren't very brainy. While they may have been 
mighty, fearsome beasts. Dinosaurs would have been incredibly easy to outwit due to their bee-sized brains. For example, the Stegosaurus had a brain the size of a lime <laughs> in a body up to 29 feet long. Two of the world's most famous paleontologists hated each other. In the late 19th century, there was little interest in paleontology in North America, something which Othniel Charles Marsh and Edward Drinker Cope sought to change. While they began as friends, they soon turned on each other in a lifelong competition to prove who was the greater scientist. While both men ultimately degraded themselves and could be said to have both lost, they essentially birthed the entire U.S. paleontology scene in the process. <laughs> now, uh, opposite to the dumbest dinosaurs, the smartest dinosaurs were all carnivores. Specifically, the predatory theropods were the ones to watch out for in prehistoric times. At the lower end of this group, the infamous T-Rex had a significantly larger brain than the herbivorous Stegosaurus. The smartest of all were the small, agile theropods like the Velociraptor or the Drudontids, which had similar brains to today's flightless birds. Yeah, in the, um, in the Jurassic Park movies, the, um, Velociraptors were always depicted as the smart and uh, work together in a pack. So, the Nigerosaurus replaced its teeth as often as every 14 days. This remarkable sauropod had rows and rows of teeth in reserve, hidden away in its mouth. When a set of teeth wore out, they would fall out, and the next row would move into position. That is cool. If it lives in water, it isn't a dinosaur. Some of the first fossils of ancient reptiles found were great beastly creatures that, by all appearances, predominantly lived underwater, and were promptly classified as plesiosaurs. While they share a common ancestor with dinosaurs, they're so distantly related that they remain in their own group. Okay, this is, uh, this is really gonna test me. The dinosaur with the longest name was Microbachycephalosaurus. I wasn't that bad at G. Microbachycephalosaurus, Microbachycephalosaurus. With 23 letters and 9 syllables, the Microbachy Cephalosaurus has an incredibly difficult and long name for such a small, small dinosaur. His name, after all, translates to small, thick headed lizard. Fair enough. We don't actually know for sure what killed the dinosaurs, and we may never find out. The Cretaceous extinction was one of the largest mass extinctions the world has ever seen, but as it happened some 66 million years ago, we may never be able to tell how it happened. Instead, all we have is theories. Around this time, an asteroid crashed into Earth just off the coast of Mexico, which started a chain of events that led to the extinction of all non-avian dinosaurs. And while it's a good theory, and is the most commonly accepted one, there are also many other ideas about how the dinosaurs died out, with climate change being the most likely culprit. All four-legged dinosaurs were herbivores. That's not to say that all herbivorous dinosaurs were four-legged, though. While that 
is a common misconception. It turns out there were quite a few herbivorous dinosaurs that could walk on two legs, at least for short periods of time. Dinosaurs didn't all go extinct at the same time either. The asteroid which crashed into Earth didn't wipe out all the dinosaurs at once. Instead, it likely triggered a chain reaction of events that completely changed the face of the planet. This, of course, didn't happen overnight, but over the following few hundred or even thousands of years, slowly killing off all but the avian dinosaurs. In the entirety of the first Jurassic Park movie, there were just 15 minutes in which dinosaurs were shown. Nine minutes of those were taken up by animatronic dinosaurs, such as the large robotic T-Rex. The other nine were all CGI, an impressive feat for a film released in 1993. Yeah, I mean, that movie still holds up so well. The, the T-Rex scene for me is probably comfortably a top ten, like, most iconic movie seen in history. The way it's built up, and then the dinosaur still looks so good. So good to a level that the CGI will never look that good, in my opinion. Next fact is, some dinosaurs had four wings. Four wings. Adorably named the Microraptor. This minuscule bird-like dinosaur measured just two to three feet long and weighed between one and one and a half kilograms or two to three pounds. There have been hundreds of fossilized remains uncovered since the turn of the 21st century and all fossils clearly show that Microraptors had wings on both its front and rear legs. Corythosauruses used their crests to make loud trombone-like sounds. Their crests were hollow in many parts and were directly connected to their nasal passages. When the Corythosaurus exhaled, the noise they produced would have been quite loud but also low frequency. A new Triceratops relative was nicknamed Hellboy after the popular comic book character. Officially named Regaliceratops Peter Husey, or Peter Husey, after the geologist who first discovered it. This fossil soon gained its comical nickname due to its unique skull shape. While it appeared much like a Triceratops, it sported small horns just above each eye, much like Hellboy. Some carnivorous dinosaurs had hollow bones. Like today's birds, dinosaurs such as Velociraptors and T-Rexes actually stored air in their bones to improve their breathing abilities. This difference essentially made these dinosaurs lighter on their feet and allowed them to breathe much more efficiently. Everything a predator would need. When King Edward VII saw sketches of the first Diplodocus skeleton, he requested a cast of it for London's Natural History Museum. Diplodocuses had the longest tails of any known dinosaurs. While it wasn't the longest dinosaur ever, the Diplodocus was certainly well endowed with its tail, which measured an incredible 46 feet long. The plates that Stegosauruses had along their backs weren't used for defence. This was the most commonly held theory for a long time, but has since been replaced with two main possibilities. The plates were either used as a display for other Stegosauruses, or 
even to help regulate their temperature. These plates were chock full of blood vessels, so they may have pumped warm blood to them, which then cooled on the large flat surfaces, much like a car's radiator. The average dinosaur weighed about 7,700 pounds, or 3,493 kilograms. There's a fossil of a protoceratops and a velociraptor caught in the middle of a death match. The pair were in the middle of an intense battle when they were trapped under a landslide, locking them in place for millions of years. The protoceratops may have been on the losing foot, as the velociraptor had sunk its long claws deep into its neck, but it wasn't a one-sided battle. The velociraptor was also fighting for its life, as the protoceratops had locked its jaws onto its right arm and broken it. Some dinosaurs may have shed their skin. From the evidence we have so far, it doesn't look like they shed their skins all in one go like modern snakes or lizards. In fact, the only evidence we have is from bird-like dinosaurs who shed small chunks of skin from behind their feathers. People debated whether the Brontosaurus was a unique species for more than a hundred years. In 1879, the first Brontosaurus skeleton was unearthed due to its similarity to the already discovered Apatosaurus. Many doubted whether it truly was a new species. As such, all Brontosaurus skeletons were marked as Apatosauruses. This continued until 2015 when an in-depth study into the relationships between these species confirmed that the Brontosaurus was indeed its own species, and so the name was reclaimed. The dinosaur with the longest claws was the Therizinosaurus, quite rightly named the Reaping Lizard. This horrifying dinosaur had three long, three point two feet, scythe like claws on each arm. With claws that long, it's also the longest clawed animal to ever have existed. I think, is that the one in um, Jurassic? What's the latest Jurassic World? The one with the locust that was so bad. But, uh, yeah, the long one fights the T-Rex at the end. But, um, yeah, it is pretty, uh, it's pretty scary. And I've just accidentally scrolled up to the top. Why? Why, why, why? Okay, next fact. Up until 1923, we didn't know how dinosaurs were born. We suspected that dinosaurs laid eggs as they were reptiles after all any actual proof. The smoking gun came in 1923 when a collection of fossilised dinosaur eggs were discovered in Mongolia. Not all dinosaurs laid the same kind of eggs. Nearly all fossilised dinosaur eggs that have been discovered had hard shells, much like birds' eggs today. A few fossilised soft-shelled eggs were on earth that date back to the first dinosaurs, suggesting that the earliest dinosaurs laid their eggs and buried them like modern lizards. Some ichthyosaurs gave birth to their infant's tail first, to prevent them from drowning before they reached the water's surface. longest carnivorous dinosaur was the Spinosaurus. I believe the Spinosaurus is the main antagonist, the bad dinosaur, in Jurassic Park 3. Uh, but the Spinosaurus was not only the largest meat-eating dinosaur, 
dinosaur. But it had a huge spine sticking out of its back, which formed a kind of sail. Spinosaurus fossils indicate they could grow up to 46 feet long and weigh around 8 tons. We actually have no idea what colour dinosaurs were. Some scientists believe that dinosaurs would have had rather dull colours, like elephants and rhinos, so they could blend in with the environment and avoid predators. On the contrary, it's also commonly theorised that dinosaurs were actually brightly coloured, so they could easily attract potential male mates, much like today's birds. In some cases, it was likely a combination of both. The Quetzalcoatlus northropi had the largest wingspan out of any known pterosaurs. Imagine looking into the sky and seeing a dinosaur-like creature the size of a small plane soaring overhead. The Quetzal Goatless Northropi, named after the Mesoamerican god, lived in the late Cretaceous period and had a mind-bending 23 to 43 feet wingspan. Quantasaurus was named after Australia's main commercial airline. This six foot long herbivore was first discovered during a dig in the Australian state of Victoria in 1996, but spent three years without a name. Finally in 1999, it was named the Quantasaurus after Quantas or Cantus. Australian airline which at the time sponsored the transport of many dinosaur fossils across Australia. We're able to estimate the speed of dinosaurs from their fossilised footprints. Unfortunately it's incredibly challenging to figure out which footprint belonged to which dinosaur with most tracks left behind unidentified. One of the UK's greatest early paleontology pioneers was not recognised in her time because she was a woman. At the beginning of the 19th century, science was still a man's line of work, making life increasingly frustrating for Mary Anning. Despite this, she persevered and unearthed fossil after fossil, including the first ever pterosaur found outside of Germany. The Cosmoceratops had 15 horns sticking out of its face. With more horns than any other known dinosaur, the Cosmoceratops, a relative of the Triceratops, certainly had the most ornate skull. It lived during the late Cretaceous period, somewhere between 76 to 75 million years ago. The Velociraptors in Jurassic Park were actually a completely different raptor. The raptors in the novel and the films were based almost entirely on uh, Danone juices. That's definitely not how you say that, but apologies. A completely different and much larger raptor found in the US. That said, even they weren't as large as the velociraptors in the films. Michael Tridgeton, the author of Jurassic Park, met with the discoverer of the dino juice to learn about the raptor's behaviour. He even admitted that the raptors in his novel what Dinona juices don't make me say it in all but name. Yeah, because Velociraptors were I'm pretty sure they were feathery and the ones in Jurassic Park were just like scaly and scary. Next fact, Velociraptors oh, were about the same size as turkeys. <laughs> or they were probably still pretty terrifying. They were nothing like the nightmare 
using raptors from Jurassic Park. In fact, more recently discovered velociraptor fossils have proved that they had long feathered tails and wing feathers on their arms. Name Velociraptor translates to speedy thief. Ceratops had the largest skull out of any known dinosaur, measuring at 10.5 feet high. The skull of the Pentasaurus was also the largest of any animal to ever walk the earth. Most dinosaurs in Jurassic Park didn't live during the Jurassic period. While the Jurassic Park series certainly made dinosaurs much more popular, it wasn't entirely accurate. Out of all the dinosaurs featured in the first film, only the Brachiosaurus and the Dilophosaurus actually belonged to the Jurassic period, while the rest mostly belonged to the Cretaceous period. To give you an idea of how wrong this was, the Jurassic period ranged from 200 to 145 million years ago, while the Cretaceous ranged from 145 to 66 million years ago. I feel like Jurassic Park, though, just has a nicer ring to it than Cretaceous Park. <laughs> Next fact, Brachiosaurus is at long giraffe-like necks. A herbivore-like today's giraffes, the Brachiosaurus made use of its long neck to feed on the choicest parts of trees that were untouched by smaller dinosaurs. Its front legs were longer than its back legs, hence why it was given a name that translates to arms lizard. Fossilised dinosaur poo is called coprolite, and it's highly prized by collectors. The Guinness World Record for the largest collection of coprolite is 1,277, which is owned by George Franzen. Franzen first became fascinated with coprolite when he was in college where he was studying paleontology. His fascination comes from the fact that you're able to tell so much about a dinosaur's lifestyle and diet by examining their fossilised faeces. Um, I mean, to an extent, yes, interesting. But at the end of the day, you literally have 1,300 pieces of animal poo just in your gaff, like... Uh, it's a little bit weird, but... Different strokes for different folks, I guess. If you want to collect animal poo, then that is absolutely fine. Or well, the next fact, we're, we're, we're really sticking with the coprolite for now. <laughs> the largest piece of carnivore coprolite weighs about as much as a dachshund. There you go. Well, I'm mixing things up here. According to Nintendo, Yoshi is not a dinosaur. <laughs> For a long time, Nintendo claimed otherwise, but now they've officially done a U-turn and stated straight up that he's not a dinosaur. He's simply a Yoshi. <laughs> the first complete dinosaur skeleton to be mounted in a museum was a Hadrosaurus. In 1858, William Barker discovered the first fossilised Hadrosaurus skeleton, which also happened to be the most intact dinosaur skeleton unearthed by this point. In 1868, the Hadrosaurus was mounted in the Academy of Natural Sciences in Philadelphia. It drew people from all over the world and inspired generations of future paleontologists. A group of dinosaurs known as the Hadrosaurs had the most teeth. This duck-billed family of dinosaurs, which 
included the Edmontosaurus and Parasaurolophus, and as many as 960 flat deep. For 50 years, the Dinocheras was known only for its arms. When the fossilised arms were discovered, scientists were quick to give the dinosaur a name. Dinocheras, which translates into terrible arms. <laughs> Seems a bit cruel and unnecessary, but okay. To be fair, going off the arms alone, this dinosaur certainly looked formidable. When full skeletons were discovered 50 years later, this awkward looking dinosaur became quite the laughing stock of the paleontology world. Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry had its own dinosaur. In 2006, scientists decided to name a newly discovered dinosaur, Dracorex Hogwartsia, which translates into Dragon King of Hogwarts. The first part of its name is inspired by the fact that this dinosaur skull is very similar in appearance to a mythical dragon. Unfortunately for Harry Potter fans, it turns out that the skull that the new dinosaur was based on was actually from a juvenile Pachycephalosaurus. Pachycephalosaurus. A piece of amber from Myanmar was found with a fully preserved dinosaur tail. While we can't tell what dinosaur the tail could have been from, it's unmistakably from a dinosaur. What's particularly fascinating is that it was from a feathered dinosaur, and the feathers have been immaculately preserved within the amber. The Tyrannosaurus rex was named the Tyrant King. Quite literally, as that's what the name it was given translates to. These fearsome beasts were some of the most, some of the largest carnivorous dinosaurs. Despite being featured in Jurassic Park, they actually lived during the Cretaceous period. The largest complete T. Rex skeleton ever discovered was named Sue. <laughs> Not the most terrifying name, will admit, but Sue the Tyrant King surely has a nice ring to it. She was discovered by Sue Hendrickson and was later nicknamed in her honour. She was certainly a massive creature, measuring 13 feet tall at the hips and 40 feet long. More than 50 T-Rex skeletons have been unearthed. Tyrannosaurus rexes have been found all over Western North America, making them one of the more mobile dinosaurs of their time. While many of the skeletons we've discovered were quite fragmented, quite a few of them were also comple almost complete, hence why we have such great reconstructions of them. The bite of a T-Rex had more falls than any other creature that's ever walked on land. According to recent calculations, they were capable of biting down on things with a force of 7.1 tons of force, about four times as much as a saltwater crocodile. This type of force allowed them to bite straight through bone, and not to just any bones, but giant dinosaur bones. Colorado's official state dinosaur is the Stegosaurus. Was back in 1876 that the first Stegosaurus fossil was discovered just outside of Denver, Colorado, Denver sorry, Colorado. Named the covered lizard due to its protective scales, it was only officially designated as Colorado State Dinosaur in 1982. The next fact, sorry, I'm just checking my still recording. It's <laughs> a good one. I knew this one before. Nicholas Cage once spent $2,706,000 on a rare dinosaur skull. In 2007, Nick Cage outbid Leo DiCaprio. 
over the skull of a Tyrannosaurus batar, a close relative of the Tyrannosaurus rex. <laughs> Cage may have come to regret bidding so high as in 2014. It was discovered that the skull had previously been stolen from Mongolia. Keen to do the right thing, Cage was quick to return the rare skull. Rexes literally could have 
squeaked or walked around talking. It's likely that dinosaurs were not cold-blooded. Well, they likely weren't cold-blooded. Like modern reptiles, they probably weren't warm-blooded either. Instead, it's believed they found a middle ground between the two. T-Rexes most likely only live to a little over 30 years old. From the fossils we found so far, that is. The oldest of which is nicknamed Trix, was discovered in 2013 in Montana, and is believed to be just over 30 years old. The famous T-Rex Sue, who we spoke about earlier, is estimated to be about 28 years old. Large sauropods likely had the longest lifespans out of all the dinosaurs. Dinosaurs such as the Apatosaurus or Diplodocus would have outlived all other dinosaurs also, it seems. While scientists initially believe they might have got as old as 300, that's now been scaled back to a meek as 70 to 80 years, about the same age ele limit as elephants. Sauropods likely ate more than one ton of plant matter daily. Being the largest animal that ever walked the earth, it should be no surprise that their diets were equally enormous. The largest plesiosaur was about 46 feet long. Imagine if you replaced a sauropod's chunky legs with sturdy flippers, shortened its tail a bit, gave it some vicious looking teeth, and then threw it into the sea and you've pretty much got a plesiosaurus on your hands. This plesiosaur, specifically the Elasmosaurus platyurus, was both the longest and the heaviest plesiosaur, weighing approximately 24 tons. Triceratops was able to fight off Tyrannosauruses with their massive horns. The name Triceratops literally translates into three-horned face. While probably helpful in attracting a potential mate, their horns were also likely used for defence. One skeleton, for example, was found with a broken horn with Tyrannosaurus bite marks on it. Dilophosauruses didn't spit poison. Jurassic Park got oh so many things wrong about this dinosaur. It didn't spit poison, it didn't have a huge frill, like a frill neck lizard, and it wasn't even remotely that small. To be fair though, this double crested dinosaur was still pretty awesome looking. It just wasn't quite as cool as the film made out to be. <laughs> the smallest pterodactyl was about the same size. Of a pigeon. <laughs> and Fred Flintstone's pet dinosaur dino was a Snorkosaurus. We're sad to say that a Snorkosaurus is a completely fictional dinosaur, though. A dinosaur called the Begomastax is one of the weirdest known dinosaurs. Described as a cross between a parrot and a porcupine, it had a beak with teeth that sharpened themselves against each other. <laughs> Another weird dinosaur is the Sorgusaurus. Looking like a giant rat, this odd dinosaur also had a furry body which suggests it is a distant ancestor of the giant ground sloth. <laughs> the only known example of the giant sauropod seismosaurus appears to have choked to death on a stone it was trying 
to swallow to use as a gastrolith. <laughs> Dinosaur skulls had large holes or windows that made their skulls lighter. Some of the largest skulls were as long as a car. Dinosaur fossils have even been found in Antarctica. Though megasaurs, ichthyosaurs, pterosaurs, plesiosaurs, and dimetrodon are commonly believed to be dinosaurs, they are all not technically dinosaurs. As we said earlier, the term dinosaur refers to just land dwelling reptiles that have a specific hip structure, among other traits. While many people think dinosaurs were massive, dinosaurs were actually usually human sized or smaller. Scientists believe that the larger bones were just easier to be fossilized. earliest named dinosaur found so far is the Eoraptor, which translates as Dawn Stealer. It was so named because it lived at the dawn of the dinosaur age. It was a meat eater about the size of a German shepherd. The first Eoraptor skeleton was discovered in Argentina in 1991. However, Another dinosaur has recently been found in Madagascar that dates as being 230 million years old. It has not been named yet. The first dinosaurs that appeared during the Triassic period, 230 million years ago, were small and lightweight. Bigger dinosaurs such as Brachiosaurus and Triceratops appeared during the Jurassic and Cretaceous periods. Um, no one knows exactly how long a dinosaur's lifespan was, but some scientists to this day remain adamant that many lived for as long as 200 years. Scientists estimate there were over 1,000 different species of non-avian dinosaurs and over 500 distinct genera. They speculate there are many still undiscovered dinosaurs and that there may be as many as 1,850 genera. Scientists believe that some dinosaurs were cold-blooded, others warm-blooded, and still others not fully one nor the other. Small meat-eaters may have been warm-blooded, plant-eaters who were not as active were probably cold-blooded. A warm-blooded animal needs about ten times more food than a cold-blooded animal the same size. Explorer Roy Chapman Andrews found the first dinosaur nest known to science in 1923 in the Gobi Desert of Mongolia. Before he found the nest, scientists were unsure how dinosaur babies were born. I tell you what, a lot of stuff was discovered in Mongolia. That's, that's evidently where it's at. <laughs> Next fact, in the original Jurassic Park, Michael Crichton wanted John Hammond, the park overseer, to be a dark Walt Disney. The Stegosaurus has the smallest brain for its body size of any known dinosaur. Its body was the size of a fan, but its brain was the size of a walnut. One tribe of Native Americans, the vegan people of Alberta, Canada, thought 
dinosaur skeletons belonged to the fathers of buffaloes. Englishmen 300 years ago believed dinosaur bones came from an elephant or even giant humans. The first recorded description of a possible dinosaur bone discovery dates back to 3,500 years ago in China. At the time, people did not know about dinosaurs, so they thought their discovery, which was some dinosaur teeth, belonged to dragons. Apologies if you can hear a little bit of background noise. I'm very close to being able to finish this video, and my neighbours have just started being a little bit louder. <laughs> Measuring 50 feet, Lyobleurodon was the biggest aquatic reptile half the size of the blue whale. Most meat-eating dinosaurs had bones filled with air. Though their bones were huge, they weren't as heavy as they looked. Birds of the same kind of hollow bones. Baby Mosaurus, translating as mouse lizard, are the smallest dinosaur skeletons ever found. They would fit inside a shopping bag. <laughs> Humans' eyes face forward so that they can see in 3D. Plant-eating dinosaurs like the Triceratops had eyes looking out to each side so they could watch for danger while they fed. A newborn human baby has a bigger brain than most adult dinosaurs had. Tyrannosaurus rex had huge back legs, but its tiny front legs were not much longer than human arms. While dinosaurs had the same set of leg bones, some had feet like a rhinoceros, elephant, bird, or a pig. The biggest footprints ever found were three feet across and four feet long. Dinosaurs often swallowed large rocks. These rocks stayed in the stomach and helped them grind up the food. Here I wondered why. I didn't really get why that dinosaur earlier tried to swallow a rock, but now I do. There we go. Help them digest food. Dino or Dinosuchus was a huge prehistoric crocodile. It most likely had the strongest bite out of any dinosaur including Tyrannosaurus rex. It weighed eight times as much as today's crocodile. And the final fact of this evening's video was slim dinosaurs such as the Comsognathus and Ornithomimus fastest dinosaurs. However, the cheetah can run faster than any dinosaur that ever existed. And that, my friends, is going to do it for the facts about dinosaurs. I mean, one of the main takeaways from this video is that Jurassic Park, the movie, is completely and utterly fraudulent. Like, it sounds like they just made up dinosaurs, basically, and then just gave it an existing name of something that was very much unlike what it was in real life. But, uh, I guess, um, I guess it sounded cooler. But, uh, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, I definitely would like to do a sort of, like, detailed history video focusing on each period, the Cretaceous, Jurassic, blah blah blah, and look at just uh, like the details, like how uh, how the creatures evolved, kind of thing. I think that would be super interesting and sort of go into a bit more detail on, um, on what we covered in this video. So if that's something you would like to see, then please do uh, let me know. And uh, as always, any fact. Comment
concepts and ideas we haven't done, please tell me down below. I again feel ashamed that we're a, a fact and history ASMR channel, and I have only just done a dinosaur video, but hopefully the fact it was one hour uh, makes up for it just, uh, just a little bit. So um, I really hope you did enjoy this video. If you did and you're able to, you're not too, too sleepy or you're asleep already, like that would be amazing if you were new to the channel and you're still here at this point then 